In this lesson, we will look at a differential equation in the form y prime plus p of x times y equals q of x times y to the power of n, where p of x and q of x are continuous functions. Equations in this form are called Bernoulli equations and can be solved using the same substitution. Notice if n, the exponent on y on the right side, is equal to zero or one, then the equation is linear, which we already know how to solve. We will assume n greater than one. For the first step, we will divide both sides of the equation by y to the power of n. Simplifying, we have y to the power of negative n times y prime plus p of x times y to the power of one minus n equals q of x. Now we'll perform a substitution by letting v equal y to the power of one minus n, where n is the original exponent on the y term on the right before we divide it through by y to the power of n. And also notice y to the power of one minus n is the y term being multiplied by p of x here in the equation once we divide it through by y to the power of n. The next step is to write the differential equation as a linear first order differential equation in terms of v. Before we do this though, we need to find v prime by differentiating both sides of the equation, v equals y to the power of one minus n with respect to x, which I've shown below. This gives us v prime is equal to the quantity one minus n times y to the power of one minus n minus one, which gives us y to the power of negative n times y prime. And now I'll perform substitution into the equation. Using the equation for v prime, notice y to the power of negative n times y prime is equal to v prime divided by the quantity one minus n, or if we want one divided by the quantity one minus n times v prime. Let's go ahead and perform that substitution. And then finally we know that y to the power of one minus n is equal to v. Notice now we do have a linear first order differential equation. Recall that one divided by the quantity one minus n is just a constant. The next step would be to solve this differential equation using an integrating factor. Let's go through this process again with an actual example. Let's solve the initial value problem y prime equals five y times e to the power of negative two x times y to the power of negative two with the initial condition y of zero equals two. Let's first write the differential equation in the correct form by subtracting five y on both sides. Notice in this form we can identify that n is equal to negative two. So if n is equal to negative two, we know our substitution is going to be v equals y to the power of one minus negative two, which gives us v equals y cubed. Remember we can also identify y cubed by dividing both sides of the equation by y to the power of negative two or multiplying by y squared. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by y squared. Notice this gives us y squared y prime minus five y cubed equals e to the power of negative two x. Notice the second term on the right has y cubed, which is what we set v equal to. The next step is to find v prime, but differentiating both sides of the equation with respect to x, which gives us dv dx or v prime equals three y squared times y prime. Notice in this case, the first term in our differential equation is y squared y prime. So we can either divide both sides of this equation by three, or if we want a perfect substitution, we can multiply both sides of the differential equation by three. Let's go ahead and do that. Multiplying both sides by three, we have three y squared y prime minus 15 y cubed equals three e to the power of negative two x. And now performing substitution, three y squared y prime is v prime, and y cubed is equal to v. Now we have a first order linear differential equation, which we can solve using an integrating factor. And here are the notes on how to do that if you need the review. Let's take this differential equation onto the next slide and solve it using an integrating factor. So first notice that p of x is equal to negative 15, and therefore the integrating factor r of x is equal to e to the power of the integral of negative 15 dx, which gives us r of x equals e to the power of negative 15 x. The next step is to multiply both sides of the differential equation by e to the power of negative 15 x. Now the left side of the equation is equal to the derivative of the integrating factor and the dependent variable v. So we can write the left side as a derivative of e to the power of negative 15 x times v with respect to x. On the right side we can simplify as well. e to the power of negative 15 x times e to the power of negative two x is equal to e to the power of negative 17 x. The next step is to integrate both sides of the equation with respect to x. On the left, the integral undoes the derivative, leaving us with e to the power of negative 15x times v. 
On the right, we need to perform u substitution, which I've shown here in blue. u equals negative 17x, du equals negative 17 dx, which indicates dx is equal to negative 1 17th du. Integrating, we have negative 3 17 times e to the power of negative 17x plus c. Remember, this constant c does include the constant from the left and the right. The next step is to solve for v. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by e to the power of positive 15x. e to the power of positive 15x times e to the power of negative 15x is equal to e to the zero, which is one. So on the left, we have v. On the right, distributing e to the power of 15x, we have negative 3 seventeenths e to the power of negative 2x plus c times e to the power of 15x. Before we use the initial condition to find c, we need to write the equation back in terms of x and y. Recall v is equal to y cubed, which gives us y cubed is equal to negative 3 seventeenths e to the power of negative 2x plus c times e to the power of 15x. Using the initial condition, y of zero equals two, we substitute zero for x and two for y. Simplifying, we have eight equals negative 3 seventeenths plus c, giving us c equals 139 seventeenths. So now we're almost done. We now know y cubed is equal to negative 3 seventeenths e to the power of negative 2x plus 139 seventeenths times e to the power of 15x. The final step to solve for y is to take the cube root of both sides, giving us y in terms of x. I hope you found this helpful.